So, um... It's a weird night tonight. What is it? Uh, ten, ten minutes to ten? Four hours sleep, max. Maybe three and a half. I'm all right. The work, um, you know, changing diapers and all that stuff, um, <laughs> keeps you sweating. And keeps me awake, you know. Oatmeal with um, protein powder and water. So I know I'm not going to work out tomorrow. So I can probably go to bed, well, sleep until noon. If I go to bed at four, I could still get up at noon and it'd be eight hours sleep. But hopefully I'll get to bed by 2.33 like I did yesterday. I think it was around three. And if I get up earlier, I might go to Costco. We'll see. But, um, weird night because, well, the guy who was my coach yesterday who was really rough with the, with the patients, with the people. He knew he was getting a cold yesterday or flu. And I remember asking him, um, so, do you, so you're gonna call in sick tomorrow? He said, no, no, I'm gonna come in. He didn't come in. So we're only three people. And where were we were, yeah, three. And I did not know that I can refuse to work with, um, to work alone. So that day where I was defeated could have been avoided. And I saw the girl who was helping me and we just chatted briefly, she's very nice. And she said, yeah, because it was our fault, <laughs> leaving me alone and then her working with the other person. And I was like, well, I learned how to like, <laughs> If I didn't have that shock, I wouldn't have gotten any better the day after. So, so every other day compared to that is just easy and rela uh, relatively relaxing. I'm a little discombobulated today because everyone's going on po um, breaks and all that. And I'm like, okay, I, I got to bring everyone to bed. And then I'm like, I can't bring everyone to bed if I'm the only one here. I got to watch everybody, you know? So there's that. So we're working together as two, me and the guy who, uh, when I was working alone, he didn't lift one finger. And he actually encouraged me to work alone. He said, oh, I had to do that, I had to work alone. You know? I'm like, oh, he's a bitch. He's not ugly, but he's a bitch. <laughs> he looks uninterest, disinterested. Which he told me later on, he, he's only in it for the money. He actually has his uh, nursing license from his country. He's just, you have to do orderly uh, to make money, obviously. You're working in the healthcare um, while you wait for your accreditation, accreditations to come to, to, get, to work through. Or some people even take the course over. I know someone, uh, the nurse who gave me my vaccines, that's what she did. So there's that. I'm still debating whether I should go, right, do nursing or maybe just do the, um, the CNA or we call it the auxiliary, auxiliary nurse. It's a year and a half program, I think, but there's a bursary, so you get paid. Hey, you know,
Mm. But anyways. So I was working with the guy. I'm working with the guy today. He's not ugly. But he's a bitch. And he's opening up a little bit more. Which is weird. The weird thing is, he's very cold. Um, he's talking to all the girls, obviously. And... Um, he's like the other coach doesn't spend time to talk with the, the people and that he's changing, you know, changing diapers and putting to bed and feeding and all that stuff. And he only knows the numbers of the rooms, not the people. With me, it's the opposite. I need to know the people and I write them down and I'm getting better at my organization system because we have to, first of all, know the rooms and the people's names, but also indicate how many times they defecated because you have to um, track it, what do they call it? Data, data, uh, chart, uh, salut, ça va? Oui. Right. Um, charting, they call it charting, right? So you're always charting. Well, not always, we're not. Nurses are always charting track of everything but we have to keep track of the um how many times they uh defecate and urinate and i mean you know if the um their tabs which is like the sen the motion sensor detector on their beds or their wheelchair if they if they work you know um That's mainly it. At the other place I was doing my internship, we had to do a few other things. But, you know, the fact that I read it in my book, um, I just have to copy it. into. I, ha I don't have to go by memory. So anyways, so then, so this guy, then this guy started opening up a little bit more. And then I noticed He's tired from working a lot. He's doing a lot double shifts and stuff. But he um, started getting a little nicer to the people. I was like, did I rub off on you? I don't know. <laughs> no. And she starts asking questions. She's like, are you married? I'm like, no. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then I get this. Um, and even some of the patients say that they said you're young and I, I don't know how to act with that because I'm not really young and it never comes up either people know have an idea how old I am or people think that I look not my age or people have their own perspective so I just you know don't mention anything you know, I guess nowadays I just consider myself um, Keanu Reeves in that sense that he doesn't change much, you know? Um, so then when I told my age, he was like, for some, like, some reason, some people, I don't know, like some people look older when they're really like half a century younger, you know? Um, and I don't know, they expect me to be the same age for some reason. They feel, uh, it's all a matter of perspectives. I really don't, I don't fight it. I don't, I just, it is what it is. I just never bring it up. If someone brings it up, that's fine. You know, I, I, I don't know. And some people use it as a form of uh, flirtation, you know. I'm like, okay, that's not working. It's not a compliment. So, but I think it does keep doors open for me. You know. But it's, it's just weird. The guy I'm working with is like decades younger than me. 
decades. But I guess he assumed we were around the same age. I knew he was talking. So that made me uncomfortable. And then um, he thinks I'm a hetero because there was something on the TV and there were these sexy girls on it. It's like a, and he's like, look at that, look at that. Oh my God. I'm like, and usually I, I, I don't, I say something, but it's like, uh, don't open my mouth here. Cause this is like, you know, this industry is like, you gotta kinda, I opened my mouth at the last place. And I did my internship. Cause all the girls were like, are you married? Do you need somebody? I'm like, um, it's not my style. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he was even saying like here, cause there's more men on the, on the floor that I'm working with. And uh, the person in charge put me like that, put me there. And, which was good, you know, because apparently he even said working with the women here because it's mostly women dominated. And it's it's worse than the gay community, I'm telling you. It's like it, bitchiness, clickiness, pettiness. Not yet, but I, I sense that could happen, you know what I mean? It's just temper tantrums, you know? But then again, with the guys, it's just like, everyone's cold, <laughs> on guard. I don't know. So, I mean, what I said to the person in charge when I had my first meeting, I'm like, I'm just gonna be hyper vigilant. Usually I open up very fast, and then when I see someone's using it against me, I close off. Now it's like, well, I did, I kind of slipped up today. I divulged quite a bit about myself. You know, being not married and all that stuff, whatever. And he asked. But, yeah. Let him think what he wants to think, you know? Without volunteering any information. So, but he explained a little bit more to me about the pay, about doing overtime. You could only do one a day, one a week. Because if you do two, it doesn't come out as double pay. So, he was saying for every pay period, it's every two weeks. Let's say it's around 1500 I guess. Everything uh, removed off, like all the taxes and stuff removed off it. Because I did the calculations, it was about almost a thousand for the amount of hours and the hourly rate. But you know, there's tax and all that stuff. So let's say it's 1500. I'd say it's about 750 a week. But if you do an overtime, which is an extra $300, it makes it to, let's say 1800, which is about 900 a week. Huh. Because I'm trying to make my money back and I have to put a lot aside and I was doing calculations. How long will it take me to make $100,000? Not, not including compound interest. Worst case scenario, I put it in a, a term deposit at 3% with ING. Worst case scenario, you know, if it's 100,000, you make an extra well, two grand per, it takes about three years at 2,800, but that would be 700 a week I'd have to save. If I make 900 a week, then I'd have $200 to live. So I'm between five and 700, and it'd take me about, let's say about three or four years to make $100,000. If I need to make more of my money back, that I lost with my businesses and my gym, 
I say around 300,000, take about 12 years. Not including co compound interest. I'm not gonna think about compound interest. And I'm gonna try to put things, like I'm trying to think of my financial goals and really go hardcore at it, you know? You know? Put some of it in this mutual funds I have, put some of it in this um, tax-free savings account that is under a little bit under now because of the you know all mutual funds are under all stocks are under well all mutual funds the whole market but then put some in more guaranteed like the uh three three percent you know like diversify it and then keep track of it and make it grow like that's my goal i kind of see the picture this is what has bothered me is that i've tried to see it financially since I was since, for decades and I started things but then I didn't go follow through and I didn't know how to follow through and I you know now I have a clearer image especially after losing a lot and now it's really I need to make the goal um, you know to bring it up to, um, to bring it up to a million, if I can, it might take twenty years. But to do something that I can manage for twenty years, something uh, written out on paper. So if it's a hundred thousand every three to four years, let's say every four years, if I do, uh, or even five, five years, let's say five hundred a month which I've always, I've done, even with, before I bought the condo, I did that, but I just didn't track, like I didn't have a goal to like, bring it up to a million, and then a million at 3% uh, interest, is $30,000, and I can live off of $30,000 without touching the principal. You know, that's the goal. More is better, of course, but at least that would be okay, you know, and even, and then work part time, you know. Um, so let's say a hundred thousand dollars in four years, three hundred in twelve years, four hundred in sixteen. 500,000 in, in 20 years. Okay, 500,000 in t 20 years. Even that, 15,000 per year, 